Hi, I'm Dubinks and this is a void. This is how void should start for you when you first start a void, except for by default, you'll be in this 720p resolution and I've just uh, made my screen up to 1080p. You can also go full screen with various options here, uh, or you can just go to the maximum size that your monitor will support. I've also set my VSync on and uh, I'm using a persistent mapped buffers, which is slightly better for this GPU. You should try that out for your case. I'm gonna load a file that I made before. So that's file open. And in here, I've got lots of files. So I'm just gonna type it by, find it by typing. And I'm gonna use this one. Okay, so that's loaded the file and it's set the view so that we can see as much of the um, object as we can. And we're looking down the the negative Z axis here with Y being up. You can see I have an edit tool available on the left and also uh, you can see there's a little box where my mouse is. Now to move we need to press the right mouse button and hold it down and then we can move our viewpoint around and we can use move forwards and backwards but we're quite some distance from this model so let's say we want to get closer. What I can do here is I can right click and select move camera here and I'm right clicking over an object so for example if I right click and move camera here on this red object and move towards it and I can do the same to this pyramid over here and I'm next to that one so now we can see the movement more clearly and I'm using W S D and A the typical um, first person controls for moving around and I can also use space to go up and shift and all of the movements makes me go faster and control for down. Okay, we've set the view at the moment to 120 degrees. This is the default view, gives quite a nice wide angle view. But if you wanted to have a different option, you can go to the camera. And here I'm gonna set my field of view and I'm gonna set that to, to 90 degrees. The other thing I'm gonna do is because I've got a fairly powerful computer here, I'm just gonna go to options and at the moment, the LOD, level of detail change distance, is set to 30 voxels away. So we switch from displaying one by one voxel to two by two voxels at some multiple of 30 voxels. It depends upon your field of view, so it's not exactly 30 voxels. So I'm gonna increase that to about 100 in this case, somewhere near there. Um, and that should maintain a very decent frame rate for me on this system whilst also giving pretty decent detail. And crank that up if you want to in order to take screenshots um, to about 300 voxels is still pretty reasonable on a high-end PC. Okay, so this large voxel model here was built entirely using the tools available in the editor. So I'm going to show some basic things that we can do. So we're going to start off with uh, this menu over here. We can see that we have a small material palette you can actually get more materials through the show materials menu. Brings up a, a second menu here. Um, and this little material palette here was made um, so that we can get a, a decent set of materials. So we have some basic uh, um, uh, diffuse colored ones at the top. And here at the bottom, we see what are uh, metals. And I'll just show you a few of those. So I'm just gonna place myself a small square down. So using the right click mouse to move, and I'm going to down here and I'm going to set, which means build rather than add, which means add to. And I'm choosing a box and this drop down, which I'm gonna choose a cube. So this is a one voxel cube. And there I have put in an amount of 125. And you'll see it's not completely square. And that's because these are constrained morphing voxels. And we have an amount between zero and 255. Those of you who are into computers will realize that means that we're using eight bits, 256 being the uh, uh, total maximum. And there we have um, the full cube in green, and it's pulling up the geometry beneath it because the constraints are that all of the geometry has to basically fit together in the voxel grid. So I can also use add and slowly grow something. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a, a, um, the, the green color again. I'm gonna add in amounts of uh, 25, let's say. So we do that over here, 
you can see that I'm gradually building up this block in units of 25. We can also go into continuous mode. Continuous mode allows us to build by holding the mouse down and it'll keep on building. So I'll show you that now. And there we go. Continuous mode can be a bit dangerous um, with large amounts. Not dangerous, but it can be a bit tricky to use with large amounts when you're uh, either adding on setting because it will just draw towards you continuously like this. And obviously if you had a greater amount that would happen faster and would become somewhat uncontrollable. Continuous mode is at its best when you're using something like paint, but um, where here you can just paint the ground in this color. And I'm gonna move the, um, the tool distance so that it sits further. The tool distance is how far this um, tool will go to um, in the open air. If I move that to some small number, you'll see that zero is obviously not a great number, 28 or so, you'll see that that's close by. And we can also use the mouse wheel to scroll this towards us and further away. We have collide on so that it won't go beyond any geometry in this case. So here we can build on the floor and then as we get further away, so I need to use sets to build something into midair. So building here in the, in the air. Okay, small cubes are not that exciting. Let's say we wanted to build something that's uh, uh, more useful, more interesting. Well, the box shape is a pretty interesting shape. Um, and here we can make something like, uh, let's say, let's make that shallow. So here we're making just a, a basic, well, I'm, I'm using, I'm in continuous mode, so I've actually made several of those, creating a step-like pattern. Uh, and the amounts are 255, I'm gonna set the amount to 255 there. And I'm going to choose this gray basic material. So there we've got a, just a, a basic uh, plinth. And we have quite a lot of different shapes that you can choose. So for example, um, we have a cylinder and we have a tube. So the tube is quite interesting. It has an orientation axis. Since this is long axis is on the X and the Y, the Z axis, I'm going to choose my axis orientation to be on Z. And there we go, we've got a hollow tube that we can run down. It's not a perfect tube because in a void, these constrained morphing voxels that we use don't make perfectly smooth shapes, um, but it's smooth than, you know, for instance, the Minecraft style voxels. Okay, so the problem with this um, way of building things, where I have my cursor point being the thing that I'm building, is that it's not as controllable as I might like. You, mean you can't get exact precise coordinates of where you want to place something. So what you'll want to do in those cases is use anchoring. I'm turning it on and off there. Um, and what happens is when you anchor something, you now get a control that gives you more precise um, uh, controls over where things are positioned. Um, and you can also type in the location by hand. To type it in, just double click into an entry um, and then type in the number and enter or you can single click down, hold, and just move left and right to move it around. Okay, now let's say I wasn't anchored and I, I had a nice position, but I just wanted to get that position slightly better. So I, let's say I want it here, but maybe one voxel to the right. So what I can do there is I can find it where I want to be. So let's say it's this position here. I right click quickly and then this gives a menu where I can then click on anchor. And here we have the anchor at the position that I have selected. And then we can change the size of that or we can move it around as before. Okay, what about if we want to be looking at an object in order to do some, let's say we wanted to paint over this pyramid. Well, what I want to do here is I want to change my camera to be in the arc ball camera mode. And I'm going to right click. Oh, and here we have the arc ball camera mode. But I actually want to be centered on this pyramid. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go center arc ball camera here. Actually, I'm 
on the center of the artboard camera on the top of the pyramid, let's say. There we go. Okay, so now I'm rotating around the this unit and I can use my keys, W. I'm using shift here to go fast and S will move in and out. A and D will give a left and right, but we can also use the mouse just to, to go around. Again, holding the right click down in order to move. A useful thing sometimes is to choose arc ball camera auto speed. This means that it knows how far away from the center you are and it'll slow down as you approach this, the center point and it'll speed up as you get further away. Okay. So those are some of the basic ways that you can make things in a void. But one of the more intriguing aspects is the ability to um, copy and paste. So what I'm gonna do to show you that is I'm gonna use the anchor tool again. I'm going to move the anchor to this point here and it's got set, I'm gonna set it to being a box shape and I'm gonna choose copy. Right, so now I need to make this box fit that pyramid and those tentacles. So I'm going to do that by just simply dragging these points out on the top. Don't have to get this perfect just as so long as it uh, covers everything that we want to select. And doesn't intersect with anything you don't want. Okay, so that's pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to basically copy that and you'll see that we've now created a, uh, a second version of this. It's not lit because it's um, not yet actually placed inside the world. So it's just floating around here. Yeah. And I can then place this object wherever I want it. So let's say I can place one there. I pressed F to do that, but you can also do do paste click by clicking this. So again, uh, say you want to it over there, I can just click paste there. But we can also um, change the orientation. So Y is up in this case. So it's red, green, blue. Y is up. So if I reflect along Y, now I've got an upside down pyramid. So I could, for example, bring this up and over this one, getting it roughly aligned there. I need to use the plane to do this from above, I think. Okay, and then there's a small gap. I'm not going to do this perfectly, but uh, I'll put it in and then move this out of the way. Actually, I'm going to go into pick mode. Pick mode allows you to pick a given color and uh, I'm going to move my artboard camera to be just in the middle there. Okay. And there we have this uh, doubled pyramid inverted around the bottom. So that's a little look at some of the basic things we can do. And if you're interested in learning more about how we build things with a void, I can uh, make further videos about this. But if, say, you have some other objects, you can import them into void as well. So for example, we support importing Vox shapes and also the Minecraft models. So I'll just show you very quickly that. So I'm going to import, first of all, uh, a Vox shape. I won't save any changes that I've made. And here if I go into my voxel models, uh, magic voxel models, and somewhere here I have, say, a scene sidewalk. So here's a, a small magical voxel model. And I can also import Minecraft maps. So I'm going to go back to voxel models, Minecraft maps, and for example, King's Landing. And here we get a progress bar. We can cancel this if we want. And here we have King's Landing. So I can fly around that. 
I'm going to move the R4 camera. We're now onto the standard FPS camera. And I'm going to speed my movement up with Shift and W to move forwards. And we can fly around that. Okay, so that's a, a brief look at using Avoid to make models and how you can import Minecraft and Vox models.